What's going on guys? This is Vinylic Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 video, and today I figured that with the release of the Commander Lilith DLC and the new level and overpower level cap, that it might be a good idea to put together a new level 80 version of how I would build Axed in the Commando. Now for the sake of this video, I'm going to focus on what's commonly referred to as an explosive build for Axton that relies less on investment in the capabilities of your turret and more on Axton's overall offensive prowess. So while a more turret focused build will allow for two turrets at once, the type of build I'm going to be going over here is going to focus more around Axton's affinity with grenades and other explosive or splash damage type weapons. In this video, I'll be going over how I construct my skill tree, I'll provide what I think are some good alterations to that skill tree, and I'll also be going over some gear recommendations as well. However, before we jump into that, it would be a good idea to explain some of my philosophy behind putting together an Axton build. To keep things simple, I would say Axton has three major ways that will allow him to improve the damage of whatever weapon he uses. The first is through kill skills like Onslaught and Metal Storm, which when combined together can provide both a damage and fiery boost that will improve your DPS. The second is through grenade damage bonuses, which can be increased through both skills and class mods to improve your damage with compatible weapons. And finally, you have the Battlefront skill, which allows Axton to achieve a flat damage boost along with some additional grenade damage bonus by simply having the turret be out and active. Now our goal is to try to leverage all three of these ways in our favor, so when it comes to selecting skills and gear for Axton, we're going to want to take advantage of most if not all kill skills, we're going to want to take any skills that boost grenade damage bonus and also use weapons that are compatible with grenade damage bonus, and of course we're going to want to spec for Battlefront along with any skills that will allow us to improve the duration of our turret or increase the speed at which it cools down. With all of this in mind, it's about time we started to talk about the skill tree and why I allocate my points the way that I do. So, the core of this build is primarily put together around the Legendary Soldier class mod, and you'll be able to see that I've gone ahead and I've spec'd for each of the tier 1 skills between Gorilla, Gunpowder, and Survival. By having at least one point in each of these skills, we could get the benefits from each as just one point can quickly turn into 6 out of 5 with the class mod equipped. The other reason I've decided to build around the Legendary Soldier is because it's usually going to be the best class mod available for Axton 95% of the time. This is because the Legendary Soldier provides a unique combination of action skill cooldown, gun damage, and fire rate bonuses that are independent of the skill boosts provided, and when you factor in the skill boosts that are provided, you may find the Legendary Soldier exceeds many other class mods that are available for Axton. So that should explain why I've allocated my skill points for Tier 1. However, in order to explain my rationale for the rest of the subtrees, we're going to have to go a little more in depth. Starting with Gorilla, the main goal here is to try to find the best way to reach the capstone skill, which is Double Up. Double Up is a skill that allows the player to modify Axton's turret to fire slag bullets at targets, which will prove to be extremely useful in the late game as you won't constantly have to switch weapons to slag enemies. As for the rest of the skill point allocation, my philosophy is to pick up skills that either A, boost turret uptime, B, contribute to improving your DPS, or C, contribute to improving your survivability. When it comes to boosting turret uptime, picking up Sentry is a must as it will add additional time to your action skill duration, allowing you to have the turret active and by extension, get the bonuses from Battlefront longer. After that, skills like Onslaught and Ready are useful for improving your DPS, while investment in Willing and Able will help improve your survivability. Personally, I think a better offense makes for a good defense, and I've decided to max out Onslaught instead of Able, but you could easily alternate these and feel free to experiment if you want. After that, the other skill I'd highly recommend any Axton player pick up is Scorched Earth, because the rockets that this skill will allow the turret to fire can deal quite a bit of damage. And when this skill gets combined with the slag bullets from Double Up, you should be able to deal quite a bit of damage to enemies just from the turret itself. As for why I didn't pick up some of the other skills, a lot of that comes down to them either being bad or me just not having enough skill points. In the case of the latter, Grenadier is actually pretty great and would be a skill worth respecting for, which I will go over a little later when I discuss some of the alterations that you can make to the skill tree. 
As for Laser Sight, it's just a skill that makes the turret acquire targets slower, while Crisis Management just doesn't go well with a number of Axton's shield-based skills like Willing, Preparation, Pressure, or Quick Charge. So I think it's best that you avoid those two skills and focus your build around pretty much everything else. This brings us to the Gunpowder subtree, where the primary goal of investing skill points here is to boost Axton's prowess with equipped weapons. More specifically, skills like Impact and Metal Storm stack pretty well with Ready and Onslaught from Gorilla to improve your DPS, while other skills like Steady and Battlefront are important for boosting the damage of those weapons even further. Steady in particular is important to use for pretty much any weapon that benefits from grenade damage bonus, while Battlefront is just a great skill to have because it boosts your damage for simply having the turret be active. As for our other skills in Gunpowder, a lot of these are mostly utility skills or they're skills that feed into the turret in some way. For example, Longbow Turret is a skill that allows the player to add Longbow Deployment 2 and increases the health of the turret, while Do or Die is a skill that partially boosts grenade damage bonus, but most importantly allows the player to throw grenades while in Fight for Your Life. And then you have skills like Expertise, which is good to allocate at least one point in for the Legendary Soldier Com, while Investment in Ranger will help you reach the Capstone, which is the Nuke skill. Though it doesn't deal a lot of damage, it is still pretty useful for the temporary knockback and stun that it can inflict on enemies, which can prove to be very useful for crowd controlling mobs if they get too close. I suppose you could knock off a point here and put it into Ranger, but I think for the amount of skill points spent, simply putting them in the capstone is just a much better option. When it comes to the skills we didn't allocate for, Overload is a skill that only boosts the magazine size of your rifles, and while it's useful for assault rifle builds, I think you'll find you can get by without it provided you pair assault rifles with the Rifleman Comp, which can also boost your assault rifle magazine size but without the skill point investment. There's also Duty Calls, which might be a skill you want to spec for if you want to use non-elemental Jacob's weapons, and thus that may actually be the subject of an alteration that we'll be discussing later on in this video. Overall though, most of the skills within this tree are meant to improve the damage of your weapons, so it's highly recommended that you pick a lot of them up. And now we have our final subtree, which is Survival. Though we aren't able to max it out, we can get pretty far into the tree and get what I would consider to be many of the better defensive based skills. With 23 skill points left over, you should be able to put at least 3 points into tier 5's grit, which will give you a 12% chance to ignore damage that might otherwise put you into fight for your life, and you're also able to put points into a lot of other shield related skills like preparation, which will allow you to regenerate some health if your shield is at full capacity, or a quick charge which will allow you to passively regenerate your shield after you kill an enemy. I've also gone ahead and picked up pressure which will allow you to boost your reload speed and shield recharge delay the lower that your health is, which can prove to be useful when you pair this skill with the B shield. After that, I'm mainly picking up skills that either benefit from the Legendary Soldier class mod like Healthy, or are important skills to have for the turret. Obviously, specking for Resourceful is important as it will reduce the long cooldown on our turret, while Failing Shield is a good skill to have to block certain enemy attacks like Terramorphous or Wormhole Thresher's Singularities. As for everything else we didn't pick, I didn't go with Maglock because I don't think you'll need it, we don't have enough points for Gemini, and as far as last ditch effort and forbearance go, both of these skills aren't necessarily bad but aren't really practical in most situations. After all, any damage bonus you get from last ditch effort is lost the minute that you score a second wind. Forbearance is more useful but may not be necessary provided you equip a shield with the proper elemental immunity or by just taking advantage of the bonuses from quick charge. Feel free to experiment but I'd recommend sticking with the skill spec that I've outlined here since most of the skills we've picked are going to be used a lot while last ditch effort and forbearance are more situational. So at this point you should have a pretty good idea why I allocated my skill points the way that I did. Again, there are some alterations that I can recommend, however I think they'll make a little more sense once we discuss some of the gear recommendations for Axton, and to start off, let's discuss class mods. Aside from a few outliers, this skill spec should allow you to take advantage of nearly every class mod that is available on Axton. 
Obviously, you will need to respec in order to take advantage of something like the Grenadier Com, but for the most part, I think you'll find the vast majority of the other class mods that are available should work pretty well with this particular skill tree build. Obviously, the Legendary Soldier is the core of this build, and we're going to be using it 90% of the time, but you can also quickly switch to the Legendary Ranger, the Legendary Engineer, the Veteran class mod, the Rifleman class mod, the Ranger class mod, and the Gunner class mod on the fly without having to respec. You'll find this is pretty useful because you can quickly go from a traditional gun build to a TDR build, or maybe you can go to a TDR build to more of a Jacob's Assault Rifle build where you're using the Rifleman Com. As far as weapons that go well with Axton, pretty much any weapon that benefits from grenade damage bonus is a great choice. Most Torg weapons, including the Unchemmed Herald, tend to be good for this reason, and you can of course use other grenade bonus compatible weapons from other manufacturers as well. And you may find things like the Hellfire, the Hornet, E-Tech SMGs, and the Hail Assault Rifle are just really great choices for this reason. There are also TDR weapons that work quite well on Axton, as pretty much all of them, with the exception of rocket launchers, can have their reload damage boosted via grenade damage bonus. So whether it be the Baby Maker, Omen, Gunnerang, or even a few select non-unique TDRs, you may find these prove to be great gear choices for Axton as well. Shield-wise, most of the high-quality shields that are considered to be great on most characters are also good choices for Axton. So if you're a huge fan of the Sham, B-Shield, Antagonist, or Blockade, these are great choices for the character. One shield you may definitely want to try out though that's more Axton specific is the Big Boom Blaster, which is a booster shield that replenishes your shields and adds one grenade and one rocket ammo when you pick up the boosters. This of course can be really useful if you're using a lot of grenades, and it's also useful if you're using low ammo per shot rocket launchers like the Bada Boom. With all of this said, I would recommend that you avoid some shields. For example, the Rough Rider is not really a great choice because it doesn't play well with a lot of Axton's survival skills, and the Love Thumper is not a great choice because Axton's not really geared towards melee. So just be sure to pick some of the more mainstream, really popular shields and the Big Boom Blaster, and I think you'll find that whatever you use should work pretty well. As for relics, it just depends on what weapons you want to use. 95% of the time, going with the Bone of the Ancients class mod that boosts your elemental damage bonus is the best choice. However, you could also use the Heart of the Ancients relic, which will boost non-elemental weapons damage for a specific weapon type. It also works with elemental weapons too, but elemental damage usually trumps pure gun damage bonus. Another relic you may want to consider specifically for Axton is the Mouthwash Relic, as it can boost assault rifle damage beyond what the Heart of the Ancients can normally do. So you may find it's a better choice if you don't mind losing the improved fight for your lifetime and health increase that you can get from scoring a second wind that the Heart of the Ancients provides. Again, one relic may be better than the other, depending on what weapon you're using, so you're just going to have to try each relic out with each weapon you have to figure out which one is best. Now, when it comes to grenades, you can mostly use whatever you want. While I would recommend the magic missile most of the time as it's a great way to slag enemies, choosing more damage-based grenades like the newly added electric chair, the newly added anti-infection, or even some old popular choices like the Meteor Shower and Fastball are really good choices for Axton. It is worth noting that if you do pick a more damage-based grenade, that it makes more sense to do a respec to take advantage of the Grenadier skill. And with that in mind, it's now time we talked about our first skill tree alteration, which involves getting that skill. The only difference I've made here is that I've taken out the points from Onslaught and put them into Grenadier. While having the movement speed that Onslaught provides would be nice, the gun damage bonus isn't something our grenades can take advantage of. Thus, it stands to reason that if you're going to make heavy use of grenades on Axton, then it makes a lot of sense to cut Onslaught and put those points into Grenadier to boost your overall grenade count. Doing the skill point alteration should allow you to take better advantage of the Grenadier class mod while still retaining your compatibility with the Legendary Soldier as well as most of the other class mods that Axton has available. 
You will lose some compatibility with the Legendary Ranger and Rifleman as both boost Onslaught, but if you're using grenades to deal the majority of your damage, it's not really going to matter that much. Now the other noteworthy alteration you can do involves duty calls. While you can use Jacob's Assault Rifles very effectively with the base version of this build, substituting Steady so you can get duty calls will allow you to boost the damage of your Jacob's Assault Rifles where you wouldn't normally be able to do that with Steady. In fact, this should end up being pretty useful provided you plan on using something like the Becca, the non-unique Jacob's Gatling Gun, or even the newly added M2828 Dumpson. After that, all you have to do is simply pair it with a Rifleman class mod and you should be able to deal quite a bit of damage per shot. So again, this could be a good alteration to make if you plan on using a lot of Jacob's Assault Rifles. At the end of the day guys, I think you'll find this build video for Axton should be pretty thorough and at this point it's just a matter of trying things out for yourself. I think you'll find the setup is pretty solid, and if not, you can always leave a comment letting me know what you might change in the comment section below. Otherwise guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video, and if you enjoyed it, definitely be sure to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload my next video, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.